The famous Grey Dane has made an appearance in almost 50 movies, either animated or live action, television or direct video, the whole lot. You'd assume that not every single one would be a great watch, or even an acceptable one, because after all, pumping out one or in some cases even multiple movies each year will clearly result in a lack of quality, and some could be actually deplorable. Well, in today's case, I'd like us to take a look at a certain Scooby-Doo film, which I consider to be one of the worst, if not the worst, Scooby movie. It's, funnily enough, the sequel to one of the most appreciated movies in the franchise, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, a movie that ups the stakes by introducing real monsters in the franchise, combined with a story and overall look that makes you feel like you're watching a genuinely good animated movie. The sequel, Scoop the Return to Zombie Island, does not match that description, not even close. Nope. So let's get down to the plot. The movie starts with a dream sequence by Fredster, he reminisces upon the times they caught villains, making the gang also look like a bunch of loonies, seeing all the monsters running scared from the gang as if they're about to pull a Rick Grimes, showing us also some familiar faces, like the spooky space cook and the snow girl both from the original series. We also see the space station from the spooky space cook getting a lot of nostalgia hits right from the get-go, followed by another hit when Freddy wakes up to reality, in the mouth shop, another classic location. In his Nightmare on Elm Street type of dream sequence, we also saw once again this man's obsession with the mystery machine. It gives huge vibes of that guy on TCL. Remembers that this old mystery machine, something that occurred in the previous movie. Ooh, continuity in a Scooby movie. I, I don't believe it. They said they would close up the mystery shop because the town sheriff ordered them to. The power of the law acting upon those mischievous things. God forbid they help the people. Scooby and Shaggy had their last drop of the mystery scene. They make the gang swear to never solve a mystery again. They do so, proving that friendship always wins. Shakespeare and Scoobert, watches their favorite host, pulls their name out for a free paid vacation, something that was offered to the show by an anonymous sponsor. Something's fishy, and the trio's spidey tingle senses it, but they won't give it much of a thought because of the promise they made to their hungry companions. The sheriff appears and also advises the gang to go on a vacation, because they desperately need it after solving all those mysteries, but correct me if I'm wrong, roughly 9 out of 10 times we see the gang in their own vacation. They should actually pick a shift and do some work. How the, how the fuck do they have money? You know how expensive gas is, Fred? The sheriff did you a favor. The gang took the ferry to said vacation island, but on the way, they noticed that the surrounding atmosphere didn't give much of the tropical island vibe, so they questioned that for a bit. Huh? But then, they remembered they made a promise and stopped doing that. Okay, it was pretty -ish funny the first time, and the second time, it's already getting annoying. But the best part is that they'll stop reusing the same joke. After like half of the movie, Great. The mystery kids are greeted by some native islanders, it seems. They tell the gang repeatedly to get out because the island is infested with zombies. What do Fred and Daphne do? Did he just say to get out? I choose to believe it's some sort of island greeting like Aloha. Gotcha. Get out to you too. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! But, but Velma? F fuck off, Velma. Fred complains about the simplicity of the van driven by the clearly caring and well-paid driver. You, you can just see it on his face that he cares so much. A palm tree falls in front of the van, making it crash. Scooby spots a shadowy figure running away. A shadowy figure which seems to resemble a large monster with ears and a tail and oh, I, I get it. It's a cat person. Like in the original, because we're on the same island, because it's a sequel movie. Oh. Velma notices that the tree has been cut down by something rather sharp, like a claw for example, which also slashed their tires. And Freddy finds out that the palm tree leaves are made out of plastic. But they can't do anything about it because Scooby and Shaggy said no 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 to solving mysteries. They're starting to act like some obnoxious assholes for real. They hurry their way to the hotel, which looks oddly similar to a place we've seen before. Like the one on Muscar Island, but no, this is Moonstar, completely different. Nothing to worry about. We get a quick refresh of the first movie's plot uh, done in the way that this movie is animated, not in the original style, and the gang enters the resort, only to be greeted by its owner and manager, Alan Smithy. Which is a nice inside joke because this is the name directors use at the end credits of movies they directed, but they don't want their name to appear on said project for different reasons. Mainly because it sucked. Yeah, it, it sucked. Alan introduces us to the staff of the resort, which... I'm not gonna say anything anymore. Yep, that, that's my reaction to Velma. Shaggy and Scooby get down to business in the dining hall, the usual. Afterwards, they go to get a nice massage, but their pleasure is briefly interrupted by the cold hands of the undead. At least Scooby's having a good time, little freak. They rush out to find the gang and explain to them what happened. The gang's deep fried circuits think they just love things. There are no zombies, yeah. There, there could have been zombies, like, for the past 20 years, 25, 50 years, we, we, we couldn't find any zombies, so yeah, they don't make no sense. Scooby and Shaggy fall out of a trapdoor hidden in the kitchen pantry. They find their the cat 
statues from the original, the place where the climax took place. The guys go back to the resort running from a zombie. The gang finally understands that there are zombies after spotting them from the resort's windows. Scooby and Shaggy allow them to pursue this mystery and finally put to bed that joke slash plot slash whatever that was. The zombies break in through the front door, but they are stopped by another one of Fred's marvelous traps. We see the cat person start to fire behind the gang, which sets off the water sprinklers, revealing that the zombies were wearing makeup and they were actually the hotel staff. But my Daphne also put two and two together and realized that Alan was the anonymous sponsor for the trip and he was the one to bring the gang here because he's a movie director and he found out about the gang by reading Velma's blog, the big blog of mysteries about their mystery career. There was also this recurring joke that Velma had this big blog and none of the members knew about it, somehow, but yeah. He stumbled upon the section called Unsolved Capers, where he found out about Moonscar Island with zombies and the whole lot and thought it would be a perfect opportunity for a movie with a mystery solving gang as well. As a flashback of what I just said played out, we also get a quick glimpse at an easter egg regarding Shaggy and his werewolf form from the 1988 movie Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf, the one with the monster cat, Race, and Shaggy's girlfriend Gucci. Googie, Googie, who we've never seen before or after that movie ever again. She, she just pff, disappeared. Well, well, that's a mystery for you. But there's one thing that Alan said that he didn't do. He wasn't the one to cut down the tree and slash the tires. So Velma's left with an iron of taste in her mouth, which fills her up with joy. Alan also explains that he planned a long movie with a car stunt and stuff, but the gang's ability to solve mysteries took that away from him. They offer to help him finish the movie after he pulls out the crying card. They begin filming, firstly with the scene in which the gang uncovers the treasure of the island. It's interrupted by Fred's stunt double, riding in what appears to be an improved version of the mystery machine. This whole time there was also a subplot of Freddy seeing that car driving around the island and he thought that he was batshit crazy. At one point, he even felt its presence behind the door. Normal guy shit, you know. But yeah, Fred is not crazy. He actually saw those things. But he's in love with the car. On terms that imply more than it is just an object which you adore. So yeah, take that as you will. They film a bit more until there is an issue with the props. The chandelier falls, almost hitting Alan. But Scooby is in for the rescue. But wait, it wasn't an accident. As Velma notices that the chandelier was cut down. And that attached to it, there was a string of cat hair. So Spooky Catmaster was to blame again. One of the reasons for attacking the director might be in fact the accessory that he wears, because he's wearing Simone's pendant from the original. Velma goes insane and searches the island for logical and rational explanation for the events that took place on that island many years before. Why, why, why do you try to ruin the whole spiel of the original movie? As you tried in the previous installment, the continuation of the 13th Ghost series, where you acted like Scrappy had never even existed. It's, it's insane, stop, stop doing that. The crew and gang are attacked by the many cats that live on the island, as previously established, but out of the bushes there appear to come actual cat people. The gang makes a run for it to the ferry to try and escape, but we see that Alan started his Joker arc by setting the boat in flames, because no one can live before finishing the movie. Most normal Hollywood director, I know. Fred starts a quick time event in order to save the Mystery Machine version 2, which we're gonna call MM2, because I'm not saying all that. Editor's note, it's the only time I say that the whole uh, time I'm recording. Very nice. He manages to do that in spectacular fashion, moving like Tom Cruise. They try to escape the cat people, but they catch Alan, and this man, as he's being pulled by the cat monsters, says that someone needs to film this. I respect the grind of this man. It isn't even the first time this happens in the movie. It's a recurring thing, but unlike the others, this has like a soul. It's actually funny. Alan is by far the best thing to come out of this movie. My man Alan. Just look at this. Unreal. Holy fuck, the strength from that is unreal. Alan's the MVP once again. No, my man spent the whole day trying to repair that and, and he just take his work away. The cat put the gang in a somewhat of an Indiana Jones type of situation, but Fred's driving skills are far too superior for that. He then goes for the ramp, doing an impressive stunt that would have ended horribly if it had gone wrong. Like, horribly. But it seems really inefficient in retrospect, because they only held the cats out for about 15 seconds. Like, how fast are they? to go around that whole ramp and house in such little time. I, I don't understand it. They get out of the van and head straight into the house to deliver us a classic Scooby-Doo musical chase scene. It feels like Where Are You season 2 all over again. This time though, it's shittier. Scooby and Shaggy pull out another costume prank as usual. They head off to the cave using the cabinet entry discovered by the two boys earlier. They set up a whole trap leaving the medallion on the ground, making the cats use it, only to reveal a spot in the ground which they dig up to uncover the treasure, but the gang comes up from behind them, looking all zombie fine thanks to the effects, and they scare the cats into falling in the pit they dug themselves. Just, just, just a little question. 
How did the game pull off that makeup and costumes all quickly like that? Did Alan prepare them in advance because that material can be just put together like that? Peter Parker did not make his mask while waiting for the subway for fuck's sake. Probably Alan had planned a scene where the gang turns into zombies for whatever reason. That's the only explanation I can give for that scene. They uncovered the cat people to be the two Alan greeters from the beginning and the ferry driver. I was surprised to see them because I quite honestly forgot about them, they only appeared briefly like two thirds of the movie ago. And it makes sense because when Alan revealed that he plotted to make a movie, they were the only ones who appeared to not be part of that project, telling the gang to go away. But there were four cat people, and they said that they didn't work with anyone else, which means that the last one is real, ooh, spooky. Then Alan had a monologue about what I just said, the cats of the island go and unveil the real treasure, as the previous one had been set up by the gang, the chest is filled with golden wrapped scooby snacks, Alan takes out all the jewelry and gold from Muscar's treasure, and exits the movie as a happy man with more money than before. How all the people working on this must have felt. The gang decides to go back into the mystery business, the sheriff appears out of nowhere, perfectly timed for that, and he gives the gang his blessing. They can now go freely and solve mysteries as they already did for 50 plus years. The end. So, this movie was a mess. It featured a whole lot of cliches from the Scooby franchise, like the musical chase scenes, the dressing up prank, and a whole lot of nostalgia and references. Way more than usual. Probably to make people feel more at home and to reminisce about the good old days, since this movie is a sequel to a movie that's about 25 years old. They try to make it seem rational, the events on the island, but then it left it more unfinished than before with that cat creature. In the original, we all know all three died. So where did this one appear from? It was clearly stated in the original that there were only three. They also left the treasure a mystery, but in this one they just unveiled it randomly at the end. It didn't have anything special in it, just your run-of-the-mill pirate's treasure chest. It all felt overall pretty empty and in bad taste, just a headless script that bumped into every wall it stumbled into, hoping that the name of the original could return a couple of veteran fans to it. Genuinely, the only good thing is Alan's character. It's funny and I liked his reaction and his vibe. But th that's about it. The whole we're not gonna solve any more mysteries plot was useless, they didn't learn anything, you could have tried to make them realize that it had consequences on other people, maybe deep delve into the fact that stirring the pot trying to solve the mysteries can cause harm to other people, that would have been a thing, but they just went into this movie with the idea to not solve more mysteries, went into a feral mode when they couldn't do that like a crackhead without a new fix, and they went back to solving mysteries. There was no journey, no, no purpose, no nothing, just a straight line from point A to point B. In conclusion, the original was light years better than this one. Don't watch it, just go for the original and you'll have a cracking time. This was Lord Seal, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to help y'all hold me out a bit. And I'll see you next time. Bye!